I can't even count the amount of gigs I've done. You know, yeah. like I DJ about 200 or so plus two to 300 gigs maybe a year roughly. Oh, okay. You know, back then uh, there was no Instagram and social yes. media. So it was going out to parties, meeting people, uh, sending mixes. Yeah. I've seen so many DJs yeah. get primed spots in places that you wouldn't have been able to get before mm. because of, you know, so it, it's, it's a different it's a different game now. And then figure out what is the way that you can become that DJ or yeah. what those goals are and how to do it. Because there's just there's too many different ways to, to It's DJ. a lot of marketing right now. So more Mark marketing than, than actually DJing, I think. The, the, the one thing though is like, I'm constantly hustling. If you want to stay long and successful in the game, you need to take care of your health. Yeah. Welcome to another episode of the All In Vlog. We are right now here in Toronto with the man, Sanger Genesis. What up? Thank you for your time, for taking your time to come to record another episode I'm of the excited. vlog. Um, yeah, so in the beginning, we usually start with like a short introduction of mm -hmm. yourself. Okay. Maybe you can uh, tell the people in Germany and maybe also now internationally, maybe yeah. in Canada, I think a lot of people in Canada will, will watch this. How did you come to, how did you get your name Sanger Genesis? Uh, is uh, it your real name or is there a story behind that? Uh, okay. Maybe we can so, start with that. Yeah, okay, so uh, <laughs> Sanga is my name and uh, years and many years ago when I first started dabbling and like before I was taking DJ seriously, uh, a friend of mine were in my car and we were just kind of trying to figure out like what's a good DJ name and uh, I felt that like using like DJ Scratch or something like that was like too like general like anyone can use yeah. that it's not like original not to me yeah, yeah. yeah. so um, we were kind of just joking around in the car and then my uh, I don't know if you remember the video game system Sega Genesis I think so, so it was like Nintendo Sega that's really old man yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, so like we we played that when we were kids, yeah. right? So then uh, my buddy's like, "What about Sega Genesis? Sega okay. Genesis?" And, like, yeah, 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 okay. and then also Genesis means um, by itself it means uh, the alpha, the beginning. Okay. Uh, nice. So we were like, "Okay, yeah, yeah." So it, it, Genesis uh, is a very powerful word by itself. Yeah. And then Sanga, actually, my name um, in Buddhist culture and like Buddhist things, uh, they it actually means like harmony and bringing people together. Okay. So we thought that was kind of cool and they were like, all right, cool, just That's go with it. That's a big meaning by it. I guess so. But like we, you know, we were just like, it sounds cool, let's just go with it. So uh, yeah, um, yeah, I mean, it's I've uh, been using it a while, but uh, to be honest with you, I think uh, in the near future, there's going to be a rebrand and a really? next evolution. Okay. Uh, so you already already planned something new uh, in the process. Yeah, okay. just because uh, I'm kind of evolving beyond yeah. just club DJing and uh, as an artist you evolve and then you want another break off. Oh. Yeah, just a, just an evolution. Yeah, that's that's the way I look at it. Not yeah. not it's not nothing new because it's always going to be yeah. me, but it's like an evolution. Yeah, nice. And and th that way it kind of helps differentiate from. Yeah a DJ to where I'm planning on heading. But let's not talk about the future now, we do it later, we yeah. start with your, we, we want to get to Sorry. know you, so, <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, we, we go to the past sure. and maybe you can tell us how did you get to the music or the music got you, so was there a certain point and how did you get a DJ? Oh, the music has been like a huge part of my life since as far back as I could remember uh, so I one of my like earliest memories uh, I remember with, as a kid uh, my parents were watching like TV and like, yeah. I could uh, and Michael Jackson was performing okay. live on TV and uh, I remember seeing that and like I was like well it's Oh. Uh, and then obviously trying to do the moonwalk when I was like, <laughs> really? yeah, that, yeah. and then did it work or? no <laughs> definitely not but can you do it now no okay <laughs> but um, yeah and like my parents they like immigrated to Canada mm -hmm. when they were really young and uh, I really thank them because they love like art and music mm -hmm. so uh, I remember when I was little I would like look through like this is gonna date me as how old I am but like cassette tapes my parents had and okay. uh, 
there would be ones labeled like English songs, mm -hmm. which would be like all like the pop and like whatever like songs and there was a lot of Michael Jackson yeah. and my parents love Michael Jackson yeah. so I was like all right cool like so, so you loved it too yeah yeah yeah, yeah no I, I right away like um, stuff really like spoke to me uh, you know as a kid yeah, yeah. and then uh, just like through school and everything like that uh, just being around it and then uh, high school I used to break dance oh you were a break dancer yeah with a lot of the crews okay. Uh, okay. so oh, some yeah. of them from that time in my life, some of my friends and people I know who are breakdancing have gone on to be like major choreographers around the world. Oh, okay. um, uh, some of them, uh, shout out to Dizzy from Supernatural's crew. Uh, he's doing some crazy things for the culture. Uh, he was living in Korea and uh, running some great events and mm -hmm. things out there. Just um, around the world, breakdancing is still very like popular and it's yeah. a very huge culture and a lot of money behind that. So was doing that and then from there you were yeah. surrounded by DJs or, or did they um, play the music for yeah, you? Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's a bunch of DJs like in Toronto, uh, one of them particularly DJ Faze, yeah. uh, was a phenomenal hip hop DJ and like breaks DJ and like any break dancing event like there was like these guys so yeah. that kind of opened my eyes to DJing yeah. uh, and then uh, when I, I got into the DJ game late when I started uh, university. So when, when start, so what was it, age of 19? Or? Yeah, like 18, 19. Okay, so I started at 21, so you were two years. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so um, I remember I just, I was at a house party one time, and uh, because I was in a new part, part of my life, uh, I wasn't feeling like I was going to be moving forward or break dancing yeah, as much, okay. like I didn't see that, and then, um, I uh, remember being at the house party and yeah. like <laughs> seeing these guys, they were just like DJing and they had their own setup and they were playing records and I was like, whoa, like this is also cool. This is cool and this is something like they kind of made a connection that yeah. I could also do this. And I remember the whole time, like I didn't talk to any girls, didn't like think, I just was watching them Focusing, DJ and just yeah. like, you know, I was just drinking my beers watching yeah. them DJ and then uh, for It was fascinated, kind of fascinated. Yeah, yeah, and I couldn't get it out of my head, like could not. And uh, for six months or so, I did like research and I was like trying to understand like what equipment to get. And then one day, just bought some really <laughs> oh, shit. shitty, really cheap equipment. And first steps, first, first steps. Set, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like a seventy dollar Behringer mixer <laughs> that I don't know. And I did. I actually bought records before I even had any equipment to play okay. the records. Yeah. So what was your first record? Do you know that? That I bought. Yeah. Um, I was really into funk at the time okay. because of breakdancing, yeah, like yeah, funk yeah, soul. Yeah, yeah. So I bought actually a Shirley Bassey record. I don't know. Like I just was. I just was like, I'm gonna do this. I might as well buy the record because I can afford that now. Yeah. And then it forced me to then have to buy the equipment because yeah. I bought the record. And I think I bought a David Bowie record as well too just because, I don't know, those were what I came across at yeah, the time, right. and I was just like, I, I had money for food, or I was going to buy records, and I bought records, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Yeah, DJing back in the days was, I think, more expensive than uh, nowadays, when you have to buy, like, vinyls and that stuff. Uh, so, I think, yes and no, because okay. back then you didn't have to buy a $3,000 computer. Okay. Right? Yeah. So you didn't need okay. that, or a controller, or whatever, you Yeah, know? that's right. Yeah. The, I mean, the turntables were expensive, but I think... I mean, this has been even before me. I remember hearing stories of like yeah. OGs and stuff, and their parents would have equipment, yeah, yeah, so they just kind of evolved from that. But um, no records. So this is the thing that I, I I'm very fortunate that I was from an era where I kind of got the tail end of going record shopping, yeah, and buying records and then going to, and then going to digital because um, there there's something really special if you're a music lover to to go and explore and like go through vinyl and you like look at the different covers and the yeah. art and then sometimes it's like you don't even know what you're coming across and yeah. you're like oh that looks cool let me just like listen to it and then you're like oh geez like i've never heard of that so it's yeah. like it's literally like a, a physical experience it's, like sight yes. smell touch feel yeah smell. It's, it's different than just download an mp3 extremely different so uh, you have this record in hand you see wow the, this cover is so nice yeah, and the yeah, idea yeah, and yeah. then you have something in your hand you yeah, yeah i can so understand that yeah so it, it, it's one of those things where i mean there's a lot of djs now that'll never get an opportunity to experience that or have a reason to experience that and it, me uh, too me not too yeah so. yeah so like because i know it and i experience it i kind of feel like man you guys like 
it, it's, we miss something. You mi- yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not it's not the same. Um, like I love digital downloading, and uh, you find so much more music, and it, it's accessible. But yeah. it's it's not a physical thing. Yeah. You know, it's not like you're taking yourself to another city. Yes. Going into this random record store and then like yes. digging through it. Like, oh shit! Like this and like. Yeah. It, it, you know, that's your whole body's involved here. You know, everything. Where here, you know, you're sitting in a computer and like. It's, yeah. It's I think there are pros and cons on both sides. Oh yeah, yeah. 100%. So because of the internet, we are able to listen to a bunch everything, of. Yeah. We can listen to every music we want yep. and that very fast. Yeah. Imagine we need to go to records home. Big must this record store be to have all of those? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But so. but I mean, at the end of the day, record stores are they they can be big. You yes. can spend hours, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I, I think like you know, it's just if you've never experienced it, you don't. It's you're not missing out. Yeah. But if you've experienced it, you're like, yeah, that was cool. I think like I have very fond memories. Um, for example, uh, this one DJ, uh, uh, you know, rest in peace, uh, Son of Soul. Uh, when I first started, he in the city, he was like the godfather of funk, okay, funk and soul. Like so, one of your idols, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Because you, you're you know what? Funk he inspired me a lot, oh, and sure. he was, okay. and I was just starting DJing, and he was just super nice to me, and like just such a good human being, like yeah. a very happy guy, and a lot of people have like great memories of him. Yeah. And uh, I remember we used to go record shopping together, and he would just like, you gotta check this out, boom, 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 and I was like, oh, that's fire, and like. So there, there, there's, a, you know, it's like it's things like that that you can't do digitally. Yeah. It's like I can I send you a track, but yeah. I'm, it's not like I'm like, yo, check this, like, yeah, put yeah, this yeah, on. You yeah, know? Yeah, so yeah. it's 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 different. Um, I hope that you know the the pros and cons like they 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 don't um, you know it's not that you guys are missing it like yeah. or, I'm updating myself shit, but I'm just very happy that I got to experience. From analog to digital, you know what I mean? I think it was also like a a meeting point for DJs and for people who share the same passion. DJs are not that you don't find them in every street. Yeah. So back in the days. Now you do. (laughs) Now you do, but back in the days you don't find them in every street. There's probably like eight DJs. Everyone here is a DJ. (laughs) But but back in the days you you find them there and you can meet them there and you share the passion there. So I think this is also a nice uh, Mm -hmm. nice. I think. Yep. Okay, let's move on. Yep. We talked a lot about the stuff now. Um, can Can you remember how you got your first DJ gig in a club? Oh boy, no. Really? <laughs> really? I don't remember. So, I, I heard really don't. Really? Yeah, uh, I, I think I, I I also have to think about yeah, this. Yeah, I, I really. I, I feel like everything's been. I you do. I. I you just I grind think, it in. Uh, yeah, I. You know what? I, I was DJing b-boy events. I was DJing yeah. like everything. So house you got parties. your name. Yeah, and it just it just built up. I think. Uh, I, yeah, I can't even as remember, an, bro. I, I've done that. Like, I can't even count the amount of gigs I've done. You know, yeah. like I DJ about two hundred or so plus two to three hundred gigs maybe a year roughly. Oh depending. shit! Yeah. Okay. So it's. Oh shit! It's pretty. Yeah. To go back all that, I, yeah. I can't. Yeah. I, I remember I, different I clubs, but I'm like, was this the first time? Or this? I yeah, can't. I thought maybe that's just one story because some DJs say, okay, we organized our own event, or some DJs say yeah. we connected very well, you know. So and and people can learn from that. Oh um, no, I, I mean it, it's different now. Yeah. You know, back then uh, there was no Instagram and social yes. media, so it was going out to parties, meeting people. Uh, sending mixes, yeah. whatever, and then just getting an opportunity. Like I'm, I'm I, you know, I play for free or I open, you know, yeah. like whatever, right? Um, now it's very different. If somebody has a social media thing with yeah. a lot of followers and whatever, it's like you. I can. I've seen so many DJs yeah. get primed spots in places that you wouldn't have been able to get before mm. because of you know. So it, it's a, it's a different it's a different game now. Um, yeah. You know, and kudos to everybody. Like everybody's hustle is, yeah. it is what it is. Uh, yeah. I think now you you've got to figure out what kind of DJ do you want to be. Yes. And then figure out what is the way that you can become that DJ or yeah. what those goals are and how to do it. Because there's just there's too many different ways to. to it's DJ. a lot of marketing right now. So Mark- more marketing than than actually DJing, I think. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but but I also I also think it's there's more places to DJ now than Definitely. there was before, right? Like uh, I know there's a lot of DJs out there who just do like stores mm. and like cool like 
cool events like that and they don't they, they never do clubs yeah and that's their lane or you know yeah. I, I think there's more opportunities to DJ but there's also more DJs so you yeah, got to yeah, figure yeah, out yeah, yeah. who am I what, where do I fit and how do I do? yeah and, and then how do I go forward with that right, right? yeah yeah nice yeah next question so let's move away a little bit from the DJ thing sure. we also want to know or I want to know I'm interested in How do you do your day? So do, do you have like a routine? And you are not also only a DJ, you do other things. Yeah. Maybe you can, so the brand Sanger Genesis is not only DJing, it's, uh, there are more different yeah, things. Too many things. <laughs> Maybe you can give us like a short uh, yeah. introduction to that, what you, what you also do. Yeah. Because you, uh, you do so many things. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, when I, first kind of made the switch because I you know uh, when you first start DJing and you're not making a lot of money you're yeah. building your business you're building you know for me as much as DJing is a passion it's also very much a business mm. and I kind of I look at the numbers and I make sure I'm good because yeah. uh, you know I, I want to make sure that doing what I'm love uh, what I love I'm also happy doing yeah. that I'm not just feeling negative or because I can't you know can't survive yeah. and, like, yeah. Live, yeah. live the way I want to live and yeah. do the goals I want to do yeah. so uh, Uh, yeah, like, I mean, uh, when I made the transition and I left doing any sort of, like, full-time work, like, I've been self-employed for the last almost, like, 10 years. Or 10 years plus, self-employed. Plus, yeah, 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 maybe. It, it's hard to figure yeah, it because out because it's, yeah. it's always changing, right? Yes. And you're, it's like, the, the, the one thing, though, is, like, I'm constantly hustling. Yeah. You can't, you can't like lay, take your foot off the gas. Or, no, you, you know, have to go forward. Yeah. And, yeah. So with DJing, the, the the big thing I realized was because I'm primarily working on weekends and making pretty good coin on the weekends, mm -hmm. that it enables me to have a flexible schedule yeah. to then put my energy towards other projects and other things that may one generate money, more money, mm -hmm. generate more networking opportunities, or just set myself up for future success, whatever that means, whether it's music related or just personal like life yeah. goal related. So nice. um, so with that being said, you know, I, I, I've worked marketing, branding for mm -hmm. agencies before and worked in the fashion industry and did all that. So taking all that knowledge and experience and yeah. then putting it towards uh, certain projects, like for example, right now, uh, Uh, some friends of mine, uh, I'm a business partner for a uh, restaurant that we're nice. opening in another city, and I handle all the marketing and yeah. the strategy for that. So you're also like a specialist in marketing? Uh, yeah, branding more branding so, and, and just and that's just because I've had that experiences from all the other businesses mm. and projects I've been yeah. involved in. Yeah, it's kind of, uh, yeah. And you, and you do a lot of it with DJing, like, now, You right? have to, you that's have, right. Yeah, that's, yeah. Right. So that's the nice thing yeah, today, yeah. so you, you, we learn marketing, yeah, we yeah. have to learn yeah, marketing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't even think it's just DJs, I think any sort of creative or anyone putting work out there you a big part of your business whether you have to learn it or so yourself I go hard and I say for every business you need marketing yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I think especially for the type of stuff we do because yeah. uh, there's so many people doing it and it's so easy to put work out there now yeah. that it's like how do you get people to connect with your brand yeah. and carve your following or your niche yeah. right because those numbers all add up to then income or opportunity right mm, yeah. so yeah so uh, involved in a, a lot of businesses mm. and entrepreneurial stuff like that's just my nature um, and doing consulting for a few small businesses brands things like that uh, so that helps and then um, bookings for some venues and helping yeah, them so with their programming okay. Uh, that, which is just natural things that yeah. I've kind of fallen into doing and I also enjoy finding opportunities to help other DJs mm -hmm. do that um, because you know what the, the reality is not every DJ wants to do business and wants to do all that no. a lot of guys and girls just want to focus on the DJing and the craft yeah. right so uh, and it, you know that's different personalities but yeah. so when I see opportunities where I'm like hey that DJ is really good they're a good fit for this brand or this event and make you know making those connections so uh, uh, started working with some great people at um, cravings uh, doing uh, they do a lot of like food festivals okay so it's uh, but there's always like music and things involved yeah. so I've been working with them the last year or so uh, booking and like run doing the DJ so roster so much stuff you know that a day only has like 24 hours yeah I don't sleep you need to sleep yeah you, you know I don't sleep so <laughs> So yeah, so it every so back to your to your whole routine and yeah. schedule. Every week and every day can be very different. Yeah. And, yeah, and you know how it is. Sometimes like you got like a week or a month where it's just slam, 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 yeah, busy, yeah, yeah. and then you got like a 
month where you're just like, mm. it's the same. Uh, yeah. So too, yeah. yeah, and then that's any business, right? The ebbs and flows. Yeah. So for me, the main things is um, I don't really have a set structure for per day. Mm -hmm. I set my structure for the week. Okay. So, so you plan your week. Um, yeah. On the Sunday or kind of yeah the yeah. week before or Monday night depending because mm -hmm. I usually try to use Sunday Monday as kind of like rest ah, day. Okay. Uh, the just, DJ Sunday is the Monday yeah exactly yeah 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 <laughs> so um, so for me it's more setting goals like uh, uh, gym and fitness and health ah, and nice. is, yeah. I think is it's very important, important. for you yeah. uh, for any any DJ I think um, if you want to stay long and successful in the game you need to take care of your health yes because uh, night nightlife, drinking, all those things that come with being a DJ, it's actually not the most, uh, it's not conducive for good yeah, long-term yeah, health. Yeah. So you've got to offset that. So you also eat like... Yeah, yeah. I, uh, you know, Reese, the last two years I've become um, primarily vegetarian. Mm -hmm. Like I don't eat meat. I eat seafood here and there. But like yeah. I'm transitioning to more, com like a more completely plant-based yeah. lifestyle. Uh, But I still love pizza and cheese. So, yeah. <laughs> pizza is your favorite oh, it's thing. My favorite <laughs> thing. Um, but, you know, it's just about finding your balance. Yeah. Uh, it's whatever works for anyone. But um, so yeah, so gym like during the week that's important. Yeah. Um, and then meet, whether it's meetings, whether it's uh, now spending a lot more time in the studio, mm. uh, that's been a big big part of it. Uh, it's where I'm finding the most uh, happiness right now. Yeah. Nice. It's, so I think, so I think uh, uh, balance between happiness and also money also uh, 100% so, man yeah. money doesn't mean shit if you're unhappy when yeah. you're getting it right and yeah. you know it, it sounds so cliche but like I, there's a lot of people out there who have a lot of money and resources and yeah, they're fucking they are miserable happy. and yes. they're not sorry I'm swearing out of it <laughs> but they're you know they're not they're not happy and then I think it's really about finding your balance and yeah. that's different for everybody yeah. and I think the reality is The DJ game, as much as there's many highs, there's a lot of challenges. There's yeah. a lot of questions. There's a lot of things DJs don't really talk about when yeah. it comes to especially the career side of things or the emotional side of things. Yeah. And uh, I am very blessed to have some really great artists and DJs around who realize that these kind of open discussions and dialogues and the realities of things are important to have yeah. because it helps us all grow and do better. Sorry, went on a tangent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's your. <laughs> that's my personality. <laughs> that was short term. Huh? That was very short. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. I can give you the long version if you want. No, no, it's, 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 <laughs> it's good. Yeah. So we are now in the studio. We moved from the cafe to the studio. Yep. And um, why we are here? Oh, we are here because we now want to talk about more about the future or your plans. Yeah. And um, yeah, you do so many things and you started producing, not right now, you did like a longer time, but yeah. uh, can you tell us uh, when you start and why you start and maybe also why you think this is important for a DJ nowadays to produce? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't think I've been producing that long seriously. I think uh, just kind of basic stuff for remixes for DJ use. Uh, But uh, I've always wanted to make my own music and uh, kind of have a vision in my head of what I yeah. want to accomplish. And um, got to a point, I think about a year and a, a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, where I said to myself, if I don't sit down and focus and make this happen, yeah. uh, I'm going to regret it. And uh, realized that I was just, it was fear that was holding me back um, because the learning curve to produce is a little bit it's, it's steep mm. and and as a dj you hear so much music and you compare yourself to the other music you're listening to and you're like oh and then when you try to do it you're like oh this is shit like yeah. it's nowhere near. <laughs> and we, we we have a a level of taste for it right so but I, but i realized that i have to kind of stick to it mm. and um i thought it would take me longer to start putting things out and feeling confident and uh, uh, to want to put things out but yeah. uh, I've been just been focusing currently yeah, no problem. so to pick up where we left off yes um, so my uh, yeah my thinking was like if I don't do this now I'm gonna regret it so I started put, focusing, focusing yeah and just putting more energy into doing this and the more I focused the more I was kind of falling more into like love with doing this and I 
I love just being left alone in the studio yeah. right now. Um, you know, which is very different than being in a club, being surrounded by people, dealing with all of that. I think like it, being in the studio and just being with me and the music, it's like you're you're kind of becoming intimate with the music. It's again. a different thing. Yeah. It's a very yeah, it's a very different thing. It, it was, there's a lot of frustration in the beginning, but I think you have to kind of stick through, stick through and. I'm nowhere where I want to be, but I feel like I've managed to progress to a level where I'm putting out remixes and figuring mm. out um, my sound right now. It's it's still a it's still a journey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just because I'm influenced by so many styles, and I like a wide variety of music from electronic to '80s to funk to trap to you know whatever. So uh, for me, I, what I'm realizing is my sound is kind of becoming an ML, a mob. I'm a, ah. <laughs> um, I'm fucking fucking up on this word right now. <laughs> Why? <laughs> this is your language. I, I know, right? Uh, I'm gonna use a different word. Describe it in a different yeah, way. Yeah, okay. My sound is uh, becoming becoming like a um, a cultivation of all the different things that I like. Other that you were influenced by that I was influenced by because I and I realize it's just things I naturally gravitate towards to, which I really like, which mm. is like. Um, I love like 80 synths. I love like G House, like that, those yeah. kicks and those bass lines, yeah. um, like really wet snares, things like that. So, those right now are influencing my sound. Uh, where it is right now, I don't think it's going to be where it ends mm. up. Um, it's kind of the process. And it's also right now primarily remixes that I'm just yeah. going heavy on the remix and really flipping it, yeah. uh, which I like, you know, had your help with on the most recent one. Yeah. <laughs> you introduced me to a Drake track, which is kind of questionable in its release. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But we managed to chop out some good things out of it yeah. and turn it into a pretty cool remix. Uh, so that's coming out shortly. Uh, you can check it out on my Spotify. Yeah, yeah. we will put all the links yeah, in the description. Yeah, sure. uh, but yeah, musically, I think uh, the product producing is just a natural evolution of. It's the next step. I feel the next. So for for many producers, DJing is the next step. But when you start with DJing, yeah, maybe yeah. it's good to produce too. Yeah, no, I I think like if a younger person were going to get into music and into this game seriously right now, I would say don't just focus on DJing mm -hmm. like like definitely DJ and be good at DJing but production I feel is uh, the bar you know as, as time evolves the bar gets changed right yeah, yeah. and I think the bar now because of technology because of things like splice and databases like that people who wouldn't have an opportunity before or the resources or a skill set or the tools to produce mm -hmm. are now able to produce yeah again with any of this you have to go through the clutter and go through all the bad stuff to get the good that's yeah you know but it's it's like you know 10 years ago there was a fraction of the amount of people DJing but now if anybody can DJ yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it's cool like yeah. do it yeah but if you want to be really good you got to put in the time and yeah and, and effort to do it yes. so I would say the production is like the next thing and uh, anyone who's getting into the game now definitely take production seriously mm -hmm. uh, just because the world is changing and a anybody is now I uh, able to carve out a niche of their own following. Yes. You, you know, you don't necessarily have to be the biggest name or known worldwide or anything like that. You could reasonably get a following of, you know, 50 to 100,000 people mm -hmm. just making your own art. Yeah. Whether it's music, photography, whatever, right? Yes. So with that being said, if you enjoy producing music and you want to do that because you love it and you want to put it out there and make some money from it, you can. Mm -hmm. Would that be a full-time thing? Maybe not. I think there's going to be, we're in an era where there's a lot of part-time DJs. There's a lot of part-time producers because so, yeah. it's an art. It's something you might be passionate about. And now you have a way to monetize it and actually get it out there to people. Yes. And if it's dope, then you blow up and yeah. then you got to, there's a whole other level there. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah nice. I, I like that for me, this should also be like the next step. Mm -hmm. So I just started a little bit, but it's not. So you really influenced me with that. I need to start and yeah. uh, doing that stuff. And the word was amalgamation. Yeah. So the one I okay. Just, uh, <laughs> yeah. So it was an amalgamation of all those styles. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Now you have you have it. New words. <laughs> New words. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so if um, uh, you talked a lot about the process within your production mm -hmm. um, thing, so you also said that the the start was very hard. Yeah. So. Um, what would you advise a young 
um, producer or, or also maybe me mm. when I uh, get into the process of learning this and for me when I started it's it was also like really frustrating mm -hmm. because I say okay I will build this and build this and I don't know how to do everything yeah. so what would you say would you say like keep okay. going keep going and what would you say would you say to me like watch YouTube videos or just try yeah. or how was your yeah so there's a few things that process. was like a trial and error to learn because the reality is there's in production, there's the musical side, mm -hmm. there's the music, uh, you know, like understanding the trends, understanding what people like, which as a DJ, you should, you, yeah. you should generally have a good idea of yeah. where music is going and all these different types of music. So there's that. There, and then there's the creative artistry and what are you trying to create? Then there's the music theory side. And then there's the sound engineering side. Mm. And any of those realms, you can like spend your lifetime just trying to figure <laughs> out more. So yeah. you kind of have to figure out like what's your goal or at least where do you want to head and what are the important things you need to like figure out that you need to learn. Mm -hmm. So it's, you can't learn everything. That's the reality, right? Like you could put in the time, but it'll take years. So you've got to be very smart about what you choose to learn. So for me, you know, with production stuff, let, so let's talk about the production side yeah. to making that transition. Uh, one of the first things I realized I had to do because I was getting lost in YouTube videos. <laughs> okay, so you, you go down a rabbit hole, yeah, and okay. you're just going like, "Oh, I'm gonna learn this," and, and just you could learn from tweaking your snares to uh, making this echo delay to all mm -hmm. this. Like the information is out there. The problem is not the information and learning how to do it. The problem is figuring out what the fuck do you focus on yeah. to create that output you want to create. Yeah. So, big thing that I'd suggest is getting some form of a structured learning in place. So. A figure out okay what are the first things you need to understand first is the tool so figure out if you're using Ableton what's the fundamental and there's tons of courses and mm. things you can take or online resources learn how the tools work learn the shortcuts learn the workflow and the efficiencies then then figure out okay what are the types of things you want to learn for the sound you may want to create right so I know okay arrangement vocal processing for remixes especially, you had yeah. to chop up, clean up vocals. Yeah. For me, personally, I really dabbled a lot of the sound engineering stuff because I realized the stuff I want to create is very complex with a lot of layers um, and I need to figure out how to make it fit from okay. a, like a, a sonic standpoint, right? And that's that's like mathematics even to an extent. Again, that's a bit of a focus. You could There's guys who sound engineer as a career. Mm. They know all this stuff. They may not be good on the trend, so they get the ideas from other people, and you know, there, okay. there's there's that. So, uh, the biggest thing too was in the beginning, don't try and finish a song. Okay, okay, okay. Because if you your skill set isn't there, and you try to say, "Hey, I'm going to finish a song," you're not going to be able to, and you're mm -hmm. not going to be able to do it quickly. Okay. So just try to learn how to lay out ideas and say, "Hey, I want to learn how to make really nice kicks," or "I want to learn these techniques." So you focus on one thing and build within, off of it. Okay. It's like DJing. Okay. You don't learn how to do a combo like, you know, three click flare yeah. off the bat. Yeah. You learn how to do a chirp, you learn yeah. how to do a baby, and then you build off of that. So that's what I, 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 I did it the other way. I was so lost. I was trying to finish songs and I wasn't getting anywhere. I wasn't getting it. I was just like, this sucks. I'm, mm. I'm terrible. And it was, yes. it's, it's disheartening. But if you break it down into smaller goals and smaller like, hey, uh, I'm a big fan of mollusk kicks. How do I learn that? Yeah. Okay, what are the programs? What's the processes? And in that process of saying, hey, I'm going to focus on the kicks, I learned how to do all these other kicks. And like, I really found other producers who had kicks that I, and, and now I'm like, okay, I know I how to do these kicks, kicks. Yeah. because they fit the sound that I may want to do. Yeah. Right. And, you know, I would say it's a mix of structured learning and goal setting with a mix of jamming and having fun because mm -hmm. you've got to have fun. Right? You're creating art, you're creating a feeling, you're creating something that you got to enjoy the process. The biggest thing that helped my growth long term, if I got inspired by a song, like uh, I really, songs that resonate with me that I really like the production and I like what they did is like Le Ute's remix of Cool or Dance With Me. So it's a 110 BPM tropical yeah. house R&B future, like, you know, whatever, however you want to define a remix. So I'd, I'd hear a song, if it's stuck in my head, I'm like, cool. Let me reverse break down that song. Okay. So I'd sit with a notebook and I'd be like, okay, what's the arrangement? Right? Because now it's helping me focus on arrangement, which right now is one of the things that I'm really trying to focus on. Okay. To make a, something that's actually a song that's a sonic journey. But what's the arrangement? Break it down. Okay, what are the instruments? What's the BPM? And just use that as a blueprint. 
and then go into your program and try to make your version of that song. Okay, okay. So, and so then, you rebuild it or you like kind of remix it? No, I didn't even like, I use the song as yeah. a, as a, um, a guideline. Okay. So the song exists. I like the song. Let me make my version. Okay. So I get similar snares, similar okay, sounds, okay. copy arrange the arrangement. It like, okay. Same way. Like, so I was trying to make my version of that song. Mm -hmm. Found a different vocal sample to chop and do. But I would not try to finish it. Yeah. I would work on it as far as I could. Maybe one or two, maximum, I'd say two sessions. Okay. And the moment I got stuck or I felt like I wasn't flowing, I was done. You put it away. In the put it away. I put the date on it. It's there in my archive and it's there. Then next time I hear another song, could be a different style that I like, because generally you're going to be around the things you like that inspire yeah, you. Yeah, and find your own style within all of those Yeah, styles, exactly. Yeah. So, okay, let me try this now. Same thing. And what I noticed in the beginning was I might only get like the beginning done to the point where then over like the course of a year of doing this regularly, I learned a lot of things. Okay. Right away, I'm applying what I learned from my tutorials and like learning. Yeah. So I was, oh, I learned this technique today. Okay, I'm going to use this technique on this idea now. Mm -hmm. So right away, you're taking this learning and the theory or the technical stuff and you're applying it and finding your own way to do That's it. Clever, yeah. And then, but now I'm not putting the pressure and the stress of trying to finish a track. I'm just, I'm practicing. Yeah. I'm yeah. creating. You sh it should make you, it should be fun. Yeah. And it was fun so because I'm like, you learn the, the yeah. And the, the, you know, the small goal setting is happening because now I'm like, cool, I know how to do that. I can do that. Yeah. And what went from me not even being able to finish a track or create a track to, okay, it's taking me two weeks to create a track. Now I can probably make a remix, a really good remix that can it, go up on Spotify yeah. and like, three sessions this is so nice yeah and and that's with and that's with me being like oh shit i gotta tweak this or and you've got to step away from it yeah that was a, that's a big thing because like that's i'll listen funny, to yeah. it i'll get bored and i'll be okay let me add this let me add this no no no, no. like because you're listening so long yeah. so um we all have different personalities and i think that kind of comes into the process of how you create mm -hmm. uh i have adhd so for me it's like I throw okay. everything at a track yeah. and then I carve it out and simplify it. And that's what I'm learning mm. because it's just how my mind works. Mm. I, you know, I, I think in layers. So my sound is very layered. Yeah. Um, and it may not be for everybody. And again, that it really depends on the lane and your goals. Yeah, but I don't think that every music or some music fits for everyone in the world. So you build your own, your own community yeah, with yeah. your music and yeah. with your style yeah what what you said so like you can have like 100,000 followers and you yeah. can have your own uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and, and the, the, to me that the the reality is like I just want to find a way to continue doing what I love yeah as a living make and, and and be able to say that hey I can spend time in the studio and it's affording me income or opportunity and it's leading to my bigger goals and that's kind of the way to do it so this is the next question this brings us to yeah. the next question what what do you want to have in the future how should we talked about uh, your what, day already what i want to have in the future is <laughs> i want this this okay you know this is actually from mala and i put a bunch of these pictures up just to inspire me yeah but um essentially i i just have this vision in my head and i've been djing clubs for so long mm -hmm. where i'm playing music that is for the club and the yeah. audience going to the club and obviously doing it in my own style. Like I, I've never been a play it safe DJ and um, mm. I've always brought my artistry to it, mm. even if it's maybe the 10 same songs every other DJ is playing. Yeah. But I am just at a point in my career and in my life and in my experience where I want to be able to curate and put my remixes and my art into a full set at a festival or a, yeah. or, or a boiler room or something like that where people will come and enjoy because they like this my taste mm. or they like my style right so um that's kind of the goal right now and uh, you know it's i would be the happiest person in the world to get onto a festival and have even if it's I'm a tiny name on a flyer yeah because to me that's like a huge accomplishment yeah. and yeah to be able to get into that level of doing this um i know i will it's just a matter of putting in work and the effort Definitely. doing the right things and putting in time yeah so that's for me is is the next step that nice because if somebody told me hey uh sanga you gotta just you know you're just gonna be a club dj for the next 10 years or mm. whatever the case may be 
um, I don't think I would be as inspired and I wouldn't okay. be pushing myself. Yeah. Right? Because there's only so much you can do with club DJing. Uh, and for me, it's, you know, it's no longer about the, 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 scra the scratches or the, you know, I, I, I rather challenge myself with something new yeah. and something that's, makes me feel happy and this is yeah. kind of, this is this is it this is like where i want to take it and then who knows maybe five or ten years from now i do hit some of these goals and i, I do yeah. get to where i want to get to and then it changes yeah. yeah yeah you know then it's like oh maybe i, I want to now run a record label or something you yeah. know who knows um that's kind of my approach to life it's always changing the bar always changes this Your is life. how it should be i think yeah. you can't stick like 20 30 40 years to the same thing yeah and it's boring and i think for me it's it's the being able to live my life and make uh, a living to some degree with all the projects and things that I do that is on my own terms and yeah. is also involving something I love that's been a part of my life since I was a child, which is yeah. music. Yeah. Right. So uh, whatever. And, you know, this DJing production, all of it, it ties in all these things I love, fashion, music, travel, meeting cool people like yourself, <laughs> you know, and it's true, like music. Connects. does bring to you and yes. connects right like we wouldn't have the friendship we had if yeah. it wasn't if it was it's strictly entirely music based yeah definitely right um and that commonality has brought common personalities together and i you know i have uh one of the gr the coolest things for me and one of the greatest things is that in my phone i've got numbers and you know friends yeah. from music that are yeah. worldwide yes It's such a nice thing, yeah. you know. And and these are these are com went from complete strangers to people who have a common love for music and a connection mm -hmm. that I would never have met and had this with had it not been for DJing and yeah. touring and try you know playing in other countries and doing all yeah. that and connecting with like-minded people. So, you know, the world is a vast, wonderful place, and things like music, things like production, things that we're passionate about can lead us on so many different journeys and yes. to me this production is another journey yeah nice yeah. i wish you all the best for that but I, when i see how you evolved the last years it's it's the right way <laughs> i yeah. think and it, it's 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 i think the the, the one thing is you kind of just have to believe in what you're doing and have uh it's, it's like what i think gary fee might have said it and a couple a lot of these guys it's like you know you sit and you focus for three months yeah and you just it's like the three month rule like focus so hard three months take away the doubt take away the fear the things holding you back and then see where you're at in three yeah. months and then you realize if this is something you really want to do yes and if this is something you're actually progressing yeah. at. and yeah. i learned very quickly i think for me the biggest thing was uh that opened my eyes was i put out this remix of boasty and in all honesty it, from when i put it out to now my production has gotten so much better yeah. so i can't say that that was my best production yeah. at the time it might have been yeah. and that one took me like two weeks to finish that track yeah right and I'm, i'm saying like a week where i sat sat there and i kept changing things and i was like it's not right it's not right and like you know and it's still in my head if i listen to it i'm like uh, it, which we all do yeah but that track is almost at 70,000 plays which yeah, shit, yeah. i and that's just on spotify which i never ever expected mm. that you it just wanted that. to throw it out and yeah i was like i like this song i found yeah. the acapella yeah let me try this yeah 70,000 plays yeah When it hit 20,000, I put a post on my Instagram and I was like, oh, 20,000. And now? Now I'm like 70,000. I'm like, I should put another post. Like, That's huge. Um, mind you, the other tracks aren't there yet. Yeah. But, you know, maybe I got to do another 100 tracks before I hit the next 200,000 It's always plays. execute, execute, execute. But, yeah. And, and But at the end of the day, I do 100 tracks, I'm going to be 100 times better. Yeah. Or whatever, you know, whatever. The, yeah. the, the, I'm going to be better at that point. Yeah. So whatever Definitely. I put out. So, um, you know, I'm... Try not to get caught up in the metrics. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. As you constantly tell me, it's the process. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I believe in that. Maybe I'm the only one. But no, no, uh, no. I think that there's a lot of truth to that. Yeah. Um, you know, go look up like what we were talking about. Kanye's. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out the Dissect podcast on Spotify, check it out and then listen to the Kanye <laughs> season. If that doesn't inspire you, and it, one, it'll change your perspective on Kanye. Mm -hmm. But if you look at like what he had to go through to get to where he had to get to, it changes your whole perspective yeah, yeah, on yeah. things. So that's just a little thing yeah. worth looking at. But yeah, yeah, cool, well, nice. Check this out. Okay, so one last thing mm -hmm. before we finish, because we have like 
45 minutes now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very nice. Thank you for, yeah, uh, to this point for the... Okay, so um, do we have like one advice uh, for the people outside in DJing or in producing uh, or maybe um, yeah, a quote or stuff for the people outside you, you want to give one. them? Um, it can it can be randomly. Maybe uh, also something from your thoughts or... Uh, yeah, okay. I think... Um, It's going to sound really cliche, but whatever you're doing, um, let's say you're a DJ or navigating mm. the DJ industry or you're not, you know, you're an artist, whatever it is you're doing, just always take a step back and try to make sure you're doing it from a place of like love and positivity. Mm. So even if it's like making business decisions or it's doing things, figure out for yourself, um, are you making that out of fear? Are you making that out of insecurity? Or are you yeah. making that because like, that's a positive decision that you love or you I think and that's something where we don't realize it on a day-to-day -day level it's really subconscious sometimes mm -hmm. so you have to be really self-aware and, and do that but I think that can make a huge difference in the long run yeah in how much you enjoy what you're doing how and how you you kind of navigate it because mm -hmm. a lot of I've, and I've been in this game a long time and I've seen a lot of people who genuinely love music And love the craft and are phenomenally talented, even maybe way more talented than I am. But they, they don't, they're not, they don't see this awareness mm. in themselves. And the industry and the exterior world affects them, and they give up or they stop yeah, yeah, or they yeah. or they get depressed or they're not happy. And because of that, they stop doing the thing they love. Yeah, nothing should stop you from doing the thing you love if you yeah. genuinely love that. So, uh, and you shouldn't be the cause of that. So do it from a place of love. Yeah, nice you words. Know? Yeah, so. Nice words. Thank you for that. So we are at the end now. Cool. Sad but true. Yeah. <laughs> um, make sure to keep uh, or to follow um, his social stuff. So like it's IG, uh, fa I think Facebook is not that important. Nah, IG this, most. For me it's Spotify primarily Spotify right is going to be the one I want to push because that's where I'm putting up yeah, the, yeah. the remix. Of Check the, the remixes and all this uh, stuff. Instagram, obviously Sanga yeah. Genesis, you can connect with me there. And I mean like this conversation we're having, like if anyone has questions or yeah. wants to connect, like... Put it in I'm, the comments or send yeah, or them a message. Me a message man. Yeah. Like this is this we don't we don't succeed individually. We succeed yeah. together. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So make sure to follow this guy. <laughs> And um, yeah, if you like the content, if you like the stuff where we do or I do, then please follow on YouTube, subscribe. All in vlog. All in vlog. And um, yeah, this is the end. So mm -hmm. we see us next Sunday. Bye bye. <laughs> check, check, check. You can calm down. <laughs> Don't. Uh, for me, I, what I'm realizing is my sound is kind of becoming an emo, emo, emo. Am I fucking fucking up on this word right now? <laughs> Why? <laughs> this is your language. I, I know, right? Uh, <laughs>